Hi guys, Cityscapes here and welcome back to Verville episode 44. What you just saw in these few opening cinematic shots was the result of last week's episode. We completely revamped that somehow undefined area between the Prime Tower district and the highway that's cutting through the city right here on the left side of the screen. And today we do more or less exactly the same in this area you can see here on the screen. Since I'm recording these two episodes right back to back, I can't really tell how these works here are received by you guys. I know some of you would like to see something completely new, um, for instance at the edge of the city or whatnot. But I can't deny that I'm somehow a bit of a perfectionist, at least when it comes to city skylines. And I just couldn't stand looking at this district here anymore, especially since we have that really nice looking new train station. I also wanted the nearby districts to look really really nice. But don't worry, today's episode marks the last one of these revamp episodes. After this one here you will get to see something completely new, so stay tuned for that. For the newer viewers of this channel here, this district I just completely demolished was built in episode 19. Yes, it was episode 19. And I tried to do um, a somewhat rundown district, but um, looking at it from today's perspective, yeah, it was okay, but I knew I could do better, so that's uh, what we're doing here today. I abandoned the idea of a rundown district and uh, I just wanted to have some generic city blocks, yeah, to have a cohesive city feel in Verville here. That's why I started off with these um, road grids here. Of course I used the uh, um, UK roads for that, as I do everywhere in Verville at this point. Now I'm just trying to fill it as good as possible. In the front here, very close to the station, I went for um, for a 60s commercial building, uh, combined them with some other taller building, but I generally try to use some um, nicer to use some nicer looking buildings in the city blocks that are close to the main street. Also. I try to use commercial buildings where the main streets are because that makes sense, I guess. While we use um, just not normal residential stuff in these uh, neighborhood streets. As you can see on the left side right now, oh, it's gone already. Um, but I, with these revamp episodes, I also tr always try to reuse some stuff I already built, I move them to the side and don't um, completely delete everything. It uh, just saves some time. Yeah, this was exactly what I was talking about, using some nicer buildings um, at the more prime uh, locations or however you want to call them. But uh, in the back of these city blocks it doesn't really matter what exactly you use, it's not like they are very much visible. I think the most visible thing is uh, or are the the roofs so i just try to make it look good um, when looking from above i mean there aren't even any bus lines or uh, potential pov routes that go through these neighborhoods in here so they are not too important to um, to be very high detail some of these corners are always a bit trickier to do it's always hard to find um, buildings that have the perfect angle for, for the roads. So when you don't have perfectly perfect 90 degrees angles, you can struggle a lot with finding um, fitting buildings. The cheap trick is to still just make a 90 degree angle with the buildings and um, occupy that little corner that the sidewalk makes with the road with some um, planters and trees and, and whatnot, so you can cover that pretty easily. If you look at the main road right now on the screen here, you can see that I used the four-lane UK road 
and um, modified it a little bit with the asset editor. I smashed some uh, class tram tracks on that. So yeah, we have a quite cohesive network pack going on right now in, in Verville. I kind of streamlined my asset use or at least network asset use with that. Currently I'm just using the UK roads and some of classes four lane tram roads and trams in general are always everywhere just the class tracks. So yeah, class for trams, UK roads for inner city and neighborhood streets and uh, the Caesar stuff for, for highways. Railway is uh, from Railway Replacer and uh, I somehow really like that having certain asset packs from some creators that fit every purpose of a given project. Here underneath this uh, highway I always struggle to find some stuff that you can uh, place underneath these areas. It's not like it's very livable space there. So on top or on the left side of the screen right now you can see that I tried to make a water canal there. Actually it's kind of hard to see because I'm jumping around all the time. It's that blue strip uh, right next to the highway right now on the top right corner of the screen. Um, if you remember I tried or I did make a river with real city skylines water underneath the highway where the large seal city shopping center is that one was built in episode 33 so check it out if you haven't already this one is a build i'm really proud of it's a quite accurate real life recreation of the seal city shopping center from zurich so yeah check this one out but anyway um Exactly, I, uh, I tried to make that seal river under that highway with uh, city skylines water that worked pretty okay. Um, there aren't too many floods and so on. Um, and I also tried to extend that water stream along the highway. But in this area here, I had to give up on the idea. It was too complicated to implement that with the water spawners and whatnot, there were just floods everywhere and uh, it wasn't very usable. So I just used this uh, cheap trick to just um, color an asphalt, a probable asphalt surface uh, blue and sunk it a bit into the ground, covered it with some metal fences. Um, but yeah, maybe I should um, revisit that little thing. I'm not too satisfied with it. But anyway, right now we are building uh, a mix between an old warehouse and some modern architecture attachments. I was just in the mood to experiment a little bit with uh, combining different styles of architecture. In general, I really love the idea of reused industrial stuff for residential purposes. So this was uh, me trying to do something like that. But in general we are just uh, jumping from city block to city block, trying to fill it up with uh, some buildings. Nothing too special to mention here. Maybe you noticed that I often um, convert uh, a building to procedural objects to mirror the object. This is often very handy to make a symmetrical city block. And right now we jumped across the tracks to the other side of the station or, or the tracks or, or whatnot. And this area is um, the Europa Alley area. In episode 33 we very quickly place down some taller buildings in here. Maybe you remember that very massive building that has some brutalist vibe to it. Um, this was sitting here since I first uh, started the city, but I got rid of it. It doesn't fit the area. And also the other taller buildings, they weren't really too fitting and I didn't really put that much effort in it. So here we go. We completely make it new. The roads I'm using in here are the flat roads from Chameleon. He made them. And it's really cool because they are very pedestrian friendly. I banned all the cars from them, except uh, the emergency vehicles and garbage trucks, of course. 
but in general it's a very pedestrian friendly area even though some would maybe say that it's uh, this uh, district doesn't have too much character because these are just very generic office blocks if I remember correctly, the Europali was also not super well received by the public, exactly because of these reasons. If I remember correctly, this area was covered by train tracks all over the place, because it used to be a postal facility. But the post uh, more or less shifted to uh, trucks rather than trains, and so all these tracks weren't needed anymore, and they could develop some new prime real estate in here. Interestingly, I didn't really find too many fitting buildings in the workshop uh, for, for this uh, project here, which really surprised me. I thought uh, some generic office blocks uh, are the most common asset types, but in the end I just settled on maybe five different assets for, for this whole place here. Actually, it's a, a bit more. But I PO'd them all to completely change the shape of the buildings to perfectly fit the, the road layout in here. <laughs> this is something I immediately realized when looking at it from Google Earth, that all these buildings had very sharp angles and were just perfectly tailored for the road layout in here. Actually, let's have a look at Google Earth right now. I think it's quite obvious uh, what I meant. It really looks like they put a lot of effort in using this space here as efficiently as possible. Almost every square meter is used somehow for real estate. And yeah, I think I could just achieve that with using procedural objects, because otherwise it's uh, almost impossible to, to fill your city blocks that neatly. So while we are just trying to make some cohesive looking office blocks, I'd also like to draw your attention to my Patreon site. I know it's kind of a repetitive and almost eye-rolling topic, but the thing is, I'm of course not sitting still and just waiting for the Verville series to die off some when. Of course, I have plans for the future with this channel, and I think it's all, it's already time for me to spoil a little bit that I have a successor to the Verville series already in the works. It's also going to be a Swiss-inspired city. And I'm currently trying to gather a lot of asset creators and other content creators around this project. Because the, the thing is, Switzerland is even more niche than the whole city skylines community in general. And there aren't just really too many assets for, for Swiss builds. I mean, of course, it's kind of obvious, Switzerland is such a small country and most European stuff is either made for Germany or Russia or whatnot. And there are just a handful of creators that make Swiss assets and uh, luckily Revo is uh, making all the Swiss train stuff, so that's a, a very lucky coincidence for me. But when it comes to buildings, building styles and also unique buildings, the workshop is really lacking some good Swiss stuff. So if you're an asset creator and you would like to contribute to my future series, please hit me up on Discord. And if you're just a viewer of this channel and you're also very curious and excited for my future project and you would like to support it, please head over to Patreon and contribute from just one buck a month because this helps me to pay other creators to make custom content for my series and we all profit off from. I can guarantee you it's gonna look really amazing to have custom tailored content for the series. It just makes it feel so authentic. It's, it's just great. And I'm sure all of you would appreciate that as well. So yeah, consider chip in a buck or two or whatever you can spare. But enough with the self-promotion here. Um, as you can see right now, we moved again on the other side of the tracks here. And I thought this would be a very nice place to make a high detail construction site. More or less in that area, there's also a pretty big construction site in real life. Actually, I can't really remember what was there in the first place, but right now they are developing also some new real estate stuff over there. So I thought in Verville this lot is very weirdly shaped anyway. So it's gonna hard to fit something in there. 
and construction sites just always look very realistic in city skylines. I really like building them, even though they are quite prop intense. But for such an important area like this one here, right in front of the train station, I thought we can spare some props and whatnot. Here I made a custom awning over the tracks here, because space is very limited in uh, the Swiss cities in general. Construction sites have to be a bit creative when it comes to store their equipment and whatnot. So they often make some temporary structures that arch over roads or the tracks in this case here to just store their equipment or building materials or whatnot. So yeah, that's uh, what I did here. And as for the building itself, I used these expressway pillars, turned them into PO and just made the ground shape um, of, of the building and not sure how this is called. I used a lot of angles, I wanted to make it look as interesting as uh, I can. So yeah, um, this is the technique I used. Then I placed some vertical pillars, measured the height a bit so it's not excessively tall. Placed those vertical pillars in the corners and then made the, the floor with some ploppable pavement. And of course I had to adjust the shape of all of that with uh, procedural objects. Then I just copied the, the floors holding the ALT button and copied it with move it so it stays in place. And uh, yeah, made the different floors like that. Then I adjusted the color a bit and I think this looks quite convincing as a, a building shell. I made a total of two of those building shells to fit the space neatly and I tried to vary the shape um, a little bit but still having them look very similar that you get the feel that um, those buildings have been developed by the same investor in, in one go. Yeah, so right now it's uh, it's exactly the same technique, it was a bit hard to select the, the right uh, POs, but it worked out in the end. Then I uh, covered some of the sides with these scaffoldings, I think they are called. They look really nice, they fit every construction site perfectly and um, just add a lot to the realism. It's actually quite funny, these shacks, I think, is the, the right word for it, where the workers, the construction workers have their offices and whatnot. They are sometimes at the weirdest places ever. For instance, with the renovation of the Zurich main station that's going on right now, those shacks have been placed 20 meters above ground on top of the entrance of the main station. It's such a bizarre look. But yeah, what are you gonna do when the, there's no space for them? So uh, in this construction site I also put them on top of each other to save some space. And uh, what you see me doing right now, I'm, I'm actually quite proud of it. I think that was a pretty smart move. I made this kind of box with prop walls and that concrete slab as the floor. Then I sunk it into the ground a bit and then I used a clippable surface to, um, as the name suggests, clip through the, through the surface. So now we have a perfect basement in here without disturbing the terrain too much. Um, I just had to cover the edges a little bit because it's kind of hard to align these clipping networks perfectly. But I really think that turned out great and uh, I can only suggest that technique to you guys as well. Then I just added some other construction site props, um, obviously the mandatory cranes. I later on reduced them in, in their height a little bit because I mean there's no point in them being uh, that tall as they are. But this is exactly the thing I meant when I said it's, it's really prop heavy. As you can see, you, you just need to place a lot of construction equipment and decals everywhere. Otherwise, it's just not really looking convincing. But guys, we are already at the end of today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank each and everyone very much for watching. 
your guys are awesome it's so great to see that after all these years you're still keen to see more from Verville. Of course, I'd like to thank my five patrons, Jason, James, Han, Connor and Rene. Thank you very much for your financial support. If you want to see high resolution screenshots, check out my Instagram account. If you want to chat a bit, join my Discord server, you also get some sneak peeks there. And other than that, I'm just really looking forward to see you in the next one.